Hello, my name is James Hugh, and right now I'm going to talk about my theories on how neurosteroids relate to development. Now, whenever we think of the mind, we think of a machine that's growing and connecting neurons in order to represent new information, but something special happens in a child's mind. They learn very quickly and very efficiently, and what most people don't understand is that the mechanism of this learning isn't through growing new connections, but cutting connections that are already there. A child is born with the most connections when they're, well, a child is born with the most connections they'll ever have, and those connections are snipped and cut in order to make sense of the world up until about 12 years old, and this process is called pruning. So why do child's brains prune and adult's brains not? Adult brains grow and make new synapses while a child's brains cuts what's there. What's the chemical difference? And I've come to believe that neurosteroids are that chemical difference. Chemicals like allopregnenolone and androsterone. They are positive allosteric modulators at the GABA-B receptor and they increase the signals excuse me, um, at the GABA-A receptor, and they increase the signals of the GABA-A receptor. Now, early on in development, there are less of these neurosteroids, which allows the pruning and allows us a lower level of sensory gating. Sensory gating is what blocks the extraneous information we take in. So a child is receiving more input, more information than the rest of us, and they and the excess, um, the excess of neuronal connections allows them to process that information. Then the neurosteroids are, are the production of neurosteroids are increased around six years old and perhaps again around twelve years old, and with that period in between, and the sensory gating goes up and the amount of pruning goes down until the pruning for the most part stops and the primary mechanism of storing information in the brain becomes growing new synaptic connections which is much slower and that's why adults learn slower than children. But there are things that can trigger extreme amounts of pruning in adults such as psychedelic trips, both good and bad, because psychedelics decrease sensory gating um, nervous breakdowns, traumatic experiences, epiphanies, perhaps, um, and things of that nature, things that lower sensory gating and allow more sensory input to come in. Once there's the sensory gating threshold has been overcome, then pruning can begin again. And I also believe that this has a huge factor in things of, like schizophrenia and mental illnesses where the pruning never really stops. So that's my theory or my theories on sensory gating and development. Thank you.